Hi there everyone. I know a lot of us are working from home at the moment, so I thought it might be good to do an episode of Objectivity here in my office in the United Kingdom and show you some of the objects I've collected over the years that sit here on my mantelpiece and my shelves. And today we're going to have the theme of chemistry. Now I last studied chemistry in high school back in Australia. I had a really inspirational chemistry teacher called Mr. Donaisky. I've actually made a video with him before. This is what he looks like. He actually retired quite recently. We'll come back to that a bit later on. But my life didn't really start getting involved in chemistry again until much later when I met a professor at the University of Nottingham called Martin Polyakov. And we teamed up with some other professors and over many years now we've been making YouTube videos about chemistry on a channel called Periodic Videos. But about five years ago, Professor Polyakov actually became Sir Martin Polyakov. He got a knighthood. Professor Sir Martin Polyakov for services to the chemical sciences. It was a big honour for him, it was a really big deal, and we were all very proud. And his colleagues at the University of Nottingham were especially proud and very keen to put a new sign on his door saying Sir Martin Polyakov instead of just Professor Martin Polyakov. So they did that, a, a workman came, took the old sign down and put a new one up. And I was around Martin's office at this time and I saw this, the old sign. Prof M. Polyakov. This had been on his door for goodness knows how many years. I'd looked at it thousands of times since our very first meeting. So I said to Martin, do you mind, could I keep that? He said, of course you can. He even signed the back there for me. Not the neatest moment in handwriting history, but Sir Martin's not famed for neat handwriting. But that's a nice little keepsake. Reminds me of the first time I ever walked in the door and every time I've walked in the door since. By the way, another memento from the chemistry department in the University of Nottingham is this very bench that I use in my office. It comes in really handy. I mainly use it actually for sort of doing mailing and sorting mail. It wasn't going to be used anymore. It was actually probably destined for the tip and I was allowed to bring it home and use it. Now this little piece of rock, I don't know enough about rock to tell you exactly what it is. I would have thought it was maybe granite or something, but goodness knows, I'm sure someone will leave a comment. This is actually something I souvenired on a trip to Sweden, just outside Stockholm. I went with Pete Lysens, who's another chemist at the University of Nottingham, and we made a bunch of videos at this quarry in Itterby. Oh, wow. <laughs> Itterby's a quarry that actually produced an ore that was studied, and they found four new elements in the ore. Four elements in the periodic table are actually named after Itterby. Can I remember what they are? They are yttrium, ytterbium, erbium and terbium, I think, all named after Itterby. We went there, we made a bunch of videos. It was one of our first real road trips making these chemistry videos, and I brought this home with me. We do all sorts of experiments and demonstrations on the channel. I keep souvenirs of those sometimes. This pound coin with the center blasted out of it. We did that using potassium chlorate and white phosphorus and put this piece of metal on top and it banged down on the coin and smashed the middle out. I kept these as little souvenirs. I like keeping these things sometimes. And this is quite recent. Here's, a, here's an unblemished two pence coin from the UK. And here's what happened after we put one in nitric acid. Normally it doesn't eat away the sort of iron core, but we got the mixtures a bit wrong on this occasion and it started eating the whole thing. This was all that was left, this wafer thin core. Here's a two pence coin with just the copper eaten off and the iron core left pretty much intact when we got the mixture right. Another thing we did, which I'm really proud of, is we actually got something in the Guinness Book of Records, which was a bit of a childhood dream of mine. We made the world's smallest periodic table. In fact, hey, hang on. Here is the Guinness Book of Records that we got into. Page 166. There's Martin, there's the tiny periodic table. And you know what, the actual hair itself is here. I kept it, it's still on the little plinth that you put into the microscope. You can see the hairs there, still stuck to this sort of sticky metal. The etching was done by pummeling the hair with a beam of irons, I-O-N-S, irons. And go boom, 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 and carved the periodic table into the actual hair. Periodic table on one of your hairs. Happy birthday from the Nano Centre. Thank you very much. I've kept the hair there and it sits now on that shelf behind me. You might be wondering why there's an empty bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey here. 
And that's because one of the real honours we had while we've been making these videos is we were invited to Russia, to Moscow, for the inauguration of four new elements that were put on the periodic table. One of those elements was Tennessee, named after the state of Tennessee, where the Oak Ridge Laboratory is based. Oak Ridge played a really big role in the synthesis of that element. And there was like an after party after the inauguration ceremony. And at the after party, the American scientists from Tennessee brought out this special bottle that had been customised by Jack Daniels that had this special bottle of whiskey made to celebrate. It says there, Element 117 TS Tennessee. And a little speech was made and then the bottle was opened and everyone was going to have a sip and I happened to be around at the time and I was given the honour or the grunt work of actually going around and pouring everybody's glasses of whiskey so they could all say cheers and, and have a drink to celebrate the occasion. And then afterwards I was left with this empty bottle and I thought, what a great souvenir of a famous moment in periodic table history. Go on then, go on then, Martin. Have a sip and give us the verdict. <laughs> Quite nice, but I'm not sure that I would drink it all the time. <laughs> I wonder if it still smells of uh, whiskey. It does, <laughs> very much so. Now, last but not least, I want to talk to you about the periodic table on the wall next to me here. It sits behind me in my office every day. Now, if you're particularly eagle-eyed, you will have seen this periodic table already in this video because this is the periodic table that was on the wall behind Mr. Donaisky, my old chemistry teacher. This is the actual periodic table that was on the wall when I was a teenager learning chemistry back in Adelaide. And when Mr. Donaisky retired, he sent me this periodic table. And it's very special to me because I think all my work to do with chemistry was inspired by a fascination with the periodic table. I always think of it as a bit of a, a kind of a treasure map. I always thought these are parts of the map I'm familiar with. Hydrogen, oxygen, things I'd heard of, things I knew about. And then there were all these exotic elements I knew nothing about. And I think this really inspired me to start making periodic videos, the chemistry videos I make on YouTube. And to have the actual periodic table that inspired it is kind of really special to me. It's nice that I get to see it every day. My actual high school periodic table. It says here that this was printed in 1979. You can see elements 104, 105 hadn't even been named yet. There's nothing after 106. Of course, all the elements to 118 have now been synthesized and named. Also, I don't think this is fading. I think for some reason, there's a complete missing name here. The element Thulium, element 69. The name's not printed underneath for some reason. I think that might be a mistake. Anyway, there you go. For a lover of the periodic table, there are all sorts of famous and historic periodic tables around the world. But in the story of my life, this is the most famous and historic one. And to actually have it here in my office is, is something that's really dear to me. I'm always surprised how badly things were written down. I'd always imagined that in the old days, people wrote with beautiful copper plate handwriting with no mistakes and so on. But this is full of mistakes. If a student handed this to me nowadays, I'd tell them to do it again. It looks such a mess. I've seen the professor's handwriting. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone, I <laughs> My say. My handwriting is beautiful. All right. <laughs>